Action. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh. So, hi, my name is Will Fuchsberger, and this is Making Games from Home. Today I want to talk to you about my process and how I incorporate basic puzzle design principles when I make match tree levels. The game that I'm going to be doing that on today is Angry Birds Match. But do not worry, all of the principles and things that I will be talking about easily apply to any puzzle game that you might be working on. The basic rules for Angry Birds Match are that players can swap two adjacent toys if they align into a match of at least three toys of the same kind. Ergo, a match tree game. In order to win, players need to collect and remove objects marked as goals before they run out of moves. Players try to create bigger matches as they will give them birds that they can then launch at other objects. Matching next to objects or hitting them with the birds will clear and collect them from the game board. Some rules of the game are constant. Players will always be confined by the 9x9 grids, limited moves and the basic matching mechanics. As they progress through the game, they get introduced to different goals, blockers and elements such as piggies, rivers, explosives, etc. These elements are the main tools for level designers like me to use and craft different levels and come up with new ideas for puzzles to solve. Fundamentally, any designer's goal is to make sure that the things they create fulfill a human need in a way that leverages existing human behavior. As a level designer, the human need I strive to fulfill is entertainment and luckily for me, humans tend to feel good after they manage to overcome a challenge. So, let's start designing a challenging and satisfying level. In game development, the level designer focuses on the creation of the titular levels. Often we will use some kind of level editor that is tailored to the type of levels we need to create. Since, depending on the game, levels can include locales, stages, missions, combat encounters, or as in today's example, puzzles. In game design, a puzzle can be defined as a game with a dominant strategy, meaning from all the different approaches a player can take, only a small subset, or in some cases even just one solution, will allow the player to win. If you have played games like Angry Birds Match, you will probably have noticed that this is true in some parts, but not completely. Not all strategies to win a level are equally successful, but the inherent randomness of the game can make less efficient or less sophisticated strategies also successful, since you don't have to figure out the so-called catch of the level. A lot of puzzles present the player with a goal that is easy to achieve and straightforward at first. For example, pop this pick. Where the fun part starts is when they realize there's a catch. I cannot make a match next to this piggy because it is isolated. The key difference between, let's say, more traditional puzzle games is that in match tree games, I rarely want to stomp the player and get them stuck on a level if they don't understand the intricacies of a single or a set of game mechanics. I rather focus on giving them a pleasant gameplay experience every time they attempt the level, and even a chance to win the level on their very first attempt with a mix of skill and a lot of luck. This is why I interpret the typical catch of a puzzle more as a motif than a hard requirement to understand the condition to solve the puzzle. Randomness is a big part of the game experience. In Angry Birds Match, I want to work with it instead of removing it. It's a square. I assume you can talk over this because they're probably going to have some cute music or something. <laughs> what are you doing? Capture engaged. Level editors rolling, mic is also rolling, and yeah, laptop is on fire, as you can probably hear it over the recording. In today's level, I want the player to interact with the gravity mechanic and also TNT boxes. These TNT boxes explode and can be used to clear big areas. The idea is that players will want to hit these boxes first to get the piggies easier, but gravity is then going to create some extra challenge. It can help to draw out ideas on paper first to better understand how something could work and what the desired layout is that you want. Depending on the tools you are using, just jumping in and starting to set up a level in engine can be easier which is what I'm going to do now. 
Angry Birds Match was created with the Unity game engine and our developers have created amazing custom editors for designers to create levels with. Still, the basics for designing puzzles apply regardless of what tool you will be using. I start by setting up the shape of the level from my sketched out idea. After that I populate the game board with blocks and enemies I think I will need to make the level work. Before I can start testing, I need to set up moves and wait for the toys that will be spawning. As I'm playing it, I look for issues that unfold while I'm playing it. Immediately I noticed that the TNT boxes don't stay in place since they are also affected by gravity. So I switch them out for variants that stay in place. I keep iterating on the level until I'm happy with the setup for it. While I'm doing this, I often want to make sure my level goes through three distinct phases. I want to start with a clear opening, ideally leading the player into the possible solutions, making sure they have to interact with the blocks I laid out for them. Once a player has created a strategy, they get to work on executing on it, working their way through the level, clearing more blocks, triggering the TNT and dropping the pick into a harder to reach spot they now have to get to, all according to plan. In the last phase, they scramble to finish the level with the remaining moves and praying to the RNG gods that they get the perfect match. Depending on your layout, the intended difficulty and what level the player has already experienced, you can play around with the player's assumptions to create levels that have deeper revelations about mechanics and rules of the game. Once I'm happy with the level, it's time to finalize it. The next step is to get some data on how your level does in real player's hands. At Rovio, I have access to playtesters, bots and other gadgets. But in a bind, the best way to get some quick insights is having one of my colleagues to play the level. They can give me instantly valuable feedback and I can look over their shoulder and see how my design works. So get your roommate, partner or friend to play it and see how your level works. Keep tweaking it, but also keep in mind you will always feel there's something to fix or improve. At some point, it's going to be good enough and you should move on to the next level. That's it for today. Check out more reading and video material in the description and also let us know if there's any other game development topic you want us to cover. Bye!